it's been a little while since the last video, um, but some people have been asking for this one. Um, on November 18th, I uh, saw my transplant team for the very first time. Uh, just as an outline of what happened, uh, when I first got there, I saw an RN. I'm not too sure her exact uh, title in all this, but um, I'll stick with RN. She kind of explained and went into detail about the whole process of the transplant from start to finish. Uh, she told me what type of medications that I could be on and the side effects and uh, explained the risks of the transplant that I could possibly face. And then the doctor came in and he said pretty much the same thing, but he added the numbers, the percentages, um, to the risks. Uh, then I went down to blood work and got around seven or eight vials of blood drawn. Then I went to dental and they did an x-ray and a dental exam to make sure that my teeth were healthy enough to go through a transplant. Some of the things the RN and the doctor uh, talked about uh, included that my transplant won't be until at least February because uh, there are people in worse shape than I am uh, and only so much room at the hospital so those people get the transplant first. Um, I will also have to stay in the city both before and after um, me being admitted to the hospital as an outpatient. There's also a possibility that I will be infertile um, after the transplant. Um, so I had to get in touch with the fertility place to uh, figure things out. Um, they also have to test all of my organs and they tested my teeth as I said previously. Um, they'll do something where they put ink, ink in me and or dye, not ink, where they see how my heart pumps to make sure my heart is healthy. They'll make me do the thing where you blow in the tube to see if your lungs are healthy and they'll do a kidney test where they uh, take a urine sample um, and make sure my kidneys are healthy. They also said that they'll probably do another bone marrow biopsy um, and all of these should happen roughly a month before the transplant happens. Um, I will have to get chemotherapy and there is a possibility that I will need to get radiation as well. Um, they're unsure of which kinds right now, but they do know that I will lose my hair. Um, and it would be a miracle if I didn't, pretty much. Um, there is a 70 to 80 percent success rate for bone marrow transplants. Um, there is a 30 percent chance that the transplant won't work, and I'll either need a new one, or it's just, I'll need a different solution. Um, there's a 50% chance that I can get something called graft-versus-host disease, um, and from my understanding of it, uh, again, I'm not a doctor, uh, and they explained it to me, but I get confused very easily, so I believe that graft-versus-host disease can be as small as something as a rash to as big as organ failure. Um, they had mentioned a few things about other organ failures uh, a couple times. 
Uh, it is part of the graft versus host disease, but a lot of the symptoms you get from GVHD can be suppressed or resolved from steroids. Um, there is a 10 to 15 percent fatality rate, so that there's 10 to 15 percent chance that I could die, but um, all of these numbers come from all bone marrow transplant patients, um, and as of what they know, I am healthy otherwise, so some of these risks might not be as scary as they seem. Um, that is pretty much um, the gist of everything that was talked about. Um, I don't know <laughs> what else to say about it, but thank you for watching.